And it's time now to talk red tape busting with Shane Bowering. Good morning, Shane. Good day, Bomber. How are you, mate? I'm very well indeed. And if you'd like to uh, give us a call, the number to call 13 13 32. And Shane is our man when it comes to busting red tape, let me tell you. And the first item on our list here, you've had a bit of homework, we'll get to that shortly, is politicians' pay. Yeah, I, I've just got a. Uh, I've thought about this a lot, I suppose, and and uh, I'm sick of hearing about politicians' pay rises. You know, forty percent, thirty percent, eighteen percent, nine, whatever it is. And I was interested to hear Paul Pasali on. I think it was Friday. I'm um, talking to Chris Adams about mm-hmm. you know politicians' pay and that politicians, you know, need to be paid on performance, which I think is probably reasonable, okay. except that. My view and my view of politicians is if you're paying on performance, by gee, they'd be they'd be skinny people because they wouldn't be getting much money um, because there's not too many of them perform. Um, they're pretty shabby. Um, so, uh, and mind you, let me say, Paul yeah. Pasali is a fantastic mayor. I've dealt with him a number of times for our listeners and for listeners of mornings. He's very helpful. He cuts through the nonsense. He gets things happening. So he is one of the very few politicians who is outstanding, and he should be paid a mozza. And he is a wonderful ambassador for Ipswich. Absolutely. Let me tell you. Absolutely. He has put Ipswich yeah. on the map. He gets out there. He gets things done. And, and where are other mayors? Like, I'll email the, 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 the mayor's office, you know, seeking a response, and it'll take, you know, a million weeks for somebody to get back to me. He responds to me personally. He's fantastic. So anyway, he was on air and he said, look, you know, politicians need to be paid on performance. And it's something that I've thought about for a long while. And to me, anybody on the public payroll, that's politicians, pensioners, um, uh, um, unemployment, um, the magistracy, anybody on the public payroll, why don't we link their pay to CPI? They go up with CPI every year. It's in legislation, it's there, so there's no argy-bargy, there's no the public sector union or the nurses union or, or whatever arguing with the government over how much is going to be increased. It's CPI, CPI from the previous year. That's what you go up. So then there's no argument. We all know what everybody's getting. The politicians can't keep having their hands in their in our pockets, our pockets because it's our money, our pockets like they do. So doesn't that make it really simple and easy? I'd love to hear what our listeners think. It makes it easy. It takes the argument out of it, and it's reasonable. It only goes up a reasonable amount. And, and look, you're keeping up with inflation and you're being paid originally a base salary that is what you're worth. Absolutely. And the thing to me is the politicians put their pay up, yet people on unemployment benefits, pensioners especially, they don't go up. They've got to fight. They, they might be years before their pension increases or unemployment benefit increases. So if we link it to CPI, that's then fair. They go up as as the consumer price index changes. So then it's matching what the cost of living is, and I think that's fair and reasonable. And I see the feds are looking at uh, disability pensions now, and and people with um, uh, not permanent disability, yes, yes. and whether whether you know they need to reapply, and what's going on there, and whether they can cut that. Uh, and, and look, and that's an interesting aspect too. And, and I just know a couple of people um, um, that, you know, sort of friends of friends that are, are on supposed disability um, pensions. I've got no idea why they're on the pension because they're fully functioning individuals as far as I can see. And obviously, you know, they've got a doctor or something mm. who is, is writing a, a certificate. But look, you know, I just think, and as I said, I'd love to hear what listeners think. Yep. But to me, that, that just takes everything out and we don't have the politicians with their hand in our pocket. Or we don't have a committee that's been appointed by Absolutely. the politicians to review whether they deserve a pay rise. That's right. And look, they all hide behind these tribunals. The yeah. tribunal said that we needed to get a pay rise. Well, they appoint the people on the tribunal. You don't think they're going to appoint somebody on the tribunal who's going to go, hey, we need to take money off these people. They're going to appoint people who are going to be sympathetic and going to support them. 13, 13, 32, if you'd like to have your say on that particular issue. What about political appointments? Well, there's another, and uh, you know, uh, our listeners will just be sitting out there probably chuckling right now, knowing exactly what I'm going to say about this, but I am sick and tired of this political appointment nonsense where the party in power appoints all their mates and the ex-pollies and the ex-blah-blah-blah. Surely there's got to be a bipartisan approach here where there are people from the other side of politics or not from any 
any link to any political party who could be appointed to do, to different roles, and we go across the boundaries of the political fence, surely. Best person for the job. That's it. You know, that's it. It's not that, you know, um, I, I saw um, the Human Rights Commissioner has just been appointed, and he's somebody, apparently, who says there shouldn't even be a Human Rights Commission. So I, I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> well, what the heck? He doesn't think there should be a Human Rights Commission, but now he's the, the commissioner. The oh, just, uh, and, and, and happy to take and, the money. And he's uh, obviously linked to, to the Liberal Party. And I just think that that's wrong, you know. He might be very well founded. He might be highly skilled. But it just smacks of, of nepotism. And why don't we get away from this? And as I said, let's look outside and look over the fence. There's got to be people in other political parties or who are non-aligned who could equally do a great job. 13, 13, 32, if you'd like to have your say on that particular issue, politicians' play, uh, pays, political appointments. And the other one is government grants. Uh, and we've had a few calls uh, in the time that I've been here about government grants, how to apply for them, uh, and, and, and how they're reviewed and decided. And, and it was something that we touched on briefly last week. And, and I thought it would be probably interesting for our listeners to hear um, a bit of a case study. We just got, because um, uh, part of our business is obviously writing grants and tenders, and it's a big part of our business. And, and this week we've got um, two of our big clients. We've got 95000 for West Cricket um, to upgrade their clubhouse. We've got eighty-eight grand for um, Brackenridge Little Athletics. And with Brackenridge Little Athletics, I thought it was interesting to share. Their project was about a 200 grand project to, to put new lights in. Mm-hmm. Any organisation generally out there would be looking for 200 grand. They'd say the project is 200 grand, I've got to find 200 grand. Finding 200 grand in grants is almost impossible. There are not many grants out there that have that much. So the secret that we, and how we approached it, was we broke the project up into a whole heap of little projects. So one project was to get the meter box upgraded so that it could accept the power for the new lights. So that mm-hmm. was one project. The next part of the project was obviously getting the poles. So that was a, that was a dollar amount we set aside. We thought, right, these poles are going to cost this amount. We got quotes for it. Then the lights are the next um, bit. And then the excavation works is the fourth. So we split the project up into four little discrete projects. Mm-hmm. So far we've got the uh, power box upgraded. We've now got the poles through the sport and rec this mm-hmm. week, so 88 grand for poles. Now we're on to the next step. So that's how people, uh, clubs, organisations, community groups need to approach their um, projects. Don't try and look for the big dollars. Try and break the project down into smaller chunks. If you break the project down into smaller chunks, you're much much better chance of getting a smaller amount than getting a big amount. So where do you go from here? Other departments or do you look at, uh, you know, perhaps... Uh, large corporations for help? Absolutely. You do it all because, like, with say, with the excavation mm-hmm. work, if you're a club that, you know, you might need $12,000 worth of excavation work done, why not approach your, you know, there's probably a heap of um, businesses in your local area who are excavators. You might be able to say to them, hey, will you come and do this for free or for a very reduced price? We will then put signs of yours up on our field so that all the people who come will see this. We'll also do a story in the local paper of how you've helped us, which that's free publicity, mm-hmm. free advertising, and we'll also put it in our newsletter. So that business for their 12 grand is probably getting a really good return, plus the 12 grand is going to be a write-off to the business anyway. Mm. So they're going to get a tax benefit. Mm-hmm. So you, you look at all those avenues. You look at your local council. You look at your local councillor, because sometimes, especially in Brisbane City Council, they have um, local councillors have um, discretionary funds that they can apply yeah. to. Yeah, you look at your state government, number of different programs of state government, and even the feds at times have, have money. So you look at all of those, and then you look at trying to match that with some sponsorship or donations from local businesses. Is that the sort of help that your organisation can provide to, to look at breaking it down and looking at areas and uh, organisations and different levels of government yep. to target? Yep, that's what we, we work for little non-profits, little sporting clubs, all the way up to the massive non-profits. And say with West Cricket Club, we've got them now over the last 12 months, 187 grand, 187,000 through four different funding opportunities for different things. So we've looked at their projects and we've worked with them. You know, they're obviously a great client. We love them. But you know, 187 grand, that's a lot of money. It is you know, a lot that, of cabbage. That, yeah. that, 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 is, that is a stack. And so that club now, you know, they're obviously a very successful club before we come along, but they're going to go ahead in leaps and bounds. And 95 grand to upgrade their clubhouse 
you know, that's just going to be a, an absolute showpiece now in, out in the western suburbs. And it will help attract people to the club and then help attract players, help attract income, makes them more sustainable. And realistically, if they'd have sought uh, a one-off 190 grand, they would have struggled to get that. that, that, that there's yeah. just about no programs out there yeah. for 190 grand. It just yeah. doesn't happen. So if you're smart, so please, non-profit organisations, if you, you're with your local community group, your local sporting club, there's money out there. You've just got to be able to be smart enough and switched on enough to know where to get it and how to write the, the story. And you can get money for your club as well. Well, if somebody wants to contact you or your organisation, how do they do that? Redtapebusters.com. Get on there. Send me an email off the, off the website. We've also got fact sheets on our website now um, and we're going to have some fact sheets up about grant writing and tender writing as well as the lobbying things that we do um, and and that will help people out. Alright, we're going to take a short break and when we come back uh, you've got a little bit of homework that we need to update our listeners with Mm -hmm. and of course we'll take your calls 13 13 32. For BC News. The red and white tiger moth plane crashed into the sea during a joy flight just after midday. Live and up to date. Three alleged bikies have been given a lesser sentence because of the conditions for bikies in jail under the Newman government's crackdown. For BC News has it covered. Budget figures are set to reveal Australia's debt has blown up to $50 billion this financial year. Stay up to date on Brisbane's news leader, News Talk 4BC. Um. A little teddy that's a chicken. Um, I call it chickpea, but I forgot its other name. I got another teddy, which is a really big one, and it's a beanie boo, and I named it. Oh, they sure know what the toy is. But do you know where the toy is? Find some toy joy at Mr. Toy's Toy World. To see their range and buy online, see mrtoys.com.au. Comes in orange, pink, blue and yellow. If you're thinking sofas, get into plush right now because you can save 30% on a whole range of sofa combinations. Choose a luxurious leather and a stylish fabric sofa or maybe a roomy modular and a relaxing recliner. Whatever the combination, you'll save 30%. So complete your living room now with 100% of plush quality while saving 30% off the price. But hurry because it won't last for long. Plush. Think sofas. I heard your heart say Think about this. Holden isn't leaving this country. We've been here for over 100 years. And while in the future we'll no longer make cars in Australia, we'll always be committed to making the best cars for Australia. That's something that'll never change. So it's business as usual for our 230 dealers around the country. We'll never forget our past, but we're focused on the future. Think Holden, because we're here to stay. From the one that goes to the and the and of course the make sure you have the batteries this Christmas and avoid having a no matter what the toy you'll find the batteries you need at the Power Shack. Big range small prices. The Power Shack. Batteries for all things great and small. Ipswich Road, Rockley. Make this Christmas unforgettable and give a piece that glitters in the Crown Family Jewelers Unforgettable Sale. Give the gift of unforgettable memories with up to 60% off all the glitters, diamonds, gemstones, pearls and gold jewellery. Christmas wishes come true with up to 60% off at Crown Family Jewelers Unforgettable Christmas Sale. On now, Indrapilly Shopping Centre, Westfield Chermside, Aspley Hypermarket and Westfield Carindale. This Christmas, B is for bicycle. B is for brandy. B is for barbecue master. B is for Batoki. Insist on Batoki Christmas ham. Available at B&D Fine Foods, Brisbane. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without Batoki. Simply the best. On the first day of Christmas, Planet Art gave to me the 12 do's of Christmas for free. Hi, this is Magdalena Rose for Planet Art. Over summer, we buy more, party more and travel more than at any other time of the year. Planet Art is giving you 12 simple actions you can take to make your Christmas a little greener. These will help you reduce, reuse and recycle better and they may even save you money. To get started, call 1300 733 712 or visit recyclingnearyou.com.au. Talking Brisbane. Brisbane is talking the big backyard with Chris Bombalus. 
And we are red tape busting with Shane Bowering and the number to call is 13 13 32 if you'd like to join the conversation as Alan has this morning. Good morning, Alan. How are you going? G'day, Very Alan. Well. How are you, mate? With the uh, CPI, were you talking about a percentage or in uh, percent or uh, an amount of money? No, no, CPI is a percentage. So the Consumer Price Index, you know, fluctuates each year it's based on uh, inflation or whatever so it could be one percent this year it could be three percent next year it could be five percent i understand all that i understand i asked the question because i I think you're only halfway there let me give this uh situation to you sure a person's on a hundred thousand and that and that's what the value of that job that that person is doing yep the basic wage is say 30 i don't know i'm keep picking figures the basic wage is thirty thousand the person on the thirty thousand and the person on the hundred thousand Still has to pay the same for price of loaf of bread, a bit of milk, right? Yes. So it should go up. It should go up in a in a figure. So it should go up of the CPI of the basic wage. Yes. And that's what everybody should get. Not whether you're earning a million dollars. That's how it should be worked out. Not percentage of income. That's what I think. I think that's where we've gone wrong. Okay, and that that's another interesting take on it, I suppose. Um, I just probably had a view that. Um, you know, say it's say CPI is three percent, and therefore our pensioners and, and you know people on unemployment benefits, as I said before, they struggle to get any increase at all. They they just it doesn't happen. Yeah. So they'd be very comfortable getting the three percent or the two percent every year. Our, our our public servants also are struggling at the moment. You know they they have to fight for two percent or whatever it is. So why don't we just lock them into link to CPI? That's fair for those. And then we've got our politicians who, as I said, you know, I just have a view that they've got our hand, their hand in our pocket all the time. So let's limit them. Instead of the 9% and all the nonsense that goes on there, that they're dragged back to CPI as well, then, yes, the, the people on the, the lower incomes, they don't go up as much because it's only a percentage. But then we're limiting our politicians from these big grabs of 8 and 15 and 20 and 40% or whatever. They're I, coming I, back I, to the, agree, the, the park as well. I agree with that. I just think you need to go the next step and make it, put it in money. To, okay. no, no. If we all pay the same, all things yeah. we do, if, yep. if we pay the same. So, so, so give an extra hand to the lower income earners. Well, well, if you, yeah. if you start, if you start the basic wage at thirty, and 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 CPI is ten percent. Yes. Everybody gets uh, three thousand. Yes. Yep. Okay, yeah. Look, I, I'm comfortable. With, I'm yeah. comfortable with that. Absolutely. Yeah. As long as it's locked in, so that we take out the argy bargy, and as I said, our politicians don't keep getting these enormous raises. Thank you, Alan. And uh, let's go to another call. And uh, this is someone you've been helping. Yes, yeah, this is Rhonda. Yep. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? Good morning, James. How are you? Yes. No, no I've been helping Rhonda, and, and I thought it'd be interesting for Rhonda to come on air yep. and share her story and where she's at, because it will help other people, and it's an insurance issue. Mm-hmm. So, Rhonda, tell us about your story. Where, where, What's happened, and where are you at now? Well, what I spoke to you about before, um, Shane, some of the things that, when I sit back and think about them and how we can help everybody, is that this whole thing started off with me trying to establish what I was covered for post-insurance work. Yes. Like, for instance, you have a scope of work. Yes. And I hadn't realised how important that scope of work was until I started to work with you, even though we may not have mentioned that word, but thinking it through. And that scope of work is supposed to be what has been done. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and, and it's our responsibility to check that up. The other issue, and I mentioned it to you before, was... Um, when you have uh, an insurance company send out a uh, preferred builder, I've learned I think you need to have somebody with you, an older person like me. Don't do it alone. Yes. Have somebody there to, to watch what you're, what's going on and to verify what's happened and what's said. And also get your own independent expert. So if the insurance, to me, if the insurance company is sending out their assessor or whatever and he's an expert in you know working out what's happened to your house, to me, I just think you need to get your own independent um, expert as well, a builder, a structural engineer, whatever it is, to give you a, a price on or, or, or to tell you exactly what they believe has gone wrong as well. Because, look, I'm not saying I don't trust our insurance companies, but you know they're there to mitigate their claims and their responsibility as best as they can. So you know their assessor is going to say this is the situation. If you're like me and, and I'm not an expert and like Rhonda, um, she's not an expert. She doesn't know. So you need. I just believe you need to get your own expert in as well. 
Shane, that would be a bit like when you get your house valued, uh, the bank values it at a very yes, conservative rate, right. and, and your valuer or, say, the real estate agent is going to give you a, a, a slightly inflated. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I just believe that. And, and Rhonda's also got a bit of the runaround with her um, claims manager. Oh, yeah. And she's, haven't you, Rhonda? And, and, and she's asked for a new claims manager and, and hasn't ha- had great success. But there was a development on Friday, I think, Rhonda. Yes, there was. They had been denying... Um, my request to change to a separate, a different um, case manager. And when I asked why, another team member came in and said that as a team they had discussed it and said no, they were going to leave it as it was. Well, we were just not getting on. And uh, so I had to, having spoken to you and knowing that there was someone like yourself in the background to help me if we got, you know, into bigger trouble, I stood my ground and eventually worked through with a supervisor. We were on the phone for quite quite a long time and I will be given a, a new case manager as a result of, of that but Shane I have to thank you because look I wouldn't have had the strength I, I really didn't know where to start and what to do without uh, with you being there in the background too. Well that's lovely Rhonda and, and you know that's with mornings and, and now with um, the big backyard I, I really appreciate the opportunity that 4BC has given me to help listeners and I haven't charged Rhonda anything I've just been supporting her giving her advice and saying, look, this is what you need to do, keep strong, and then if I need to get involved down the track, I will, and I'll help Rhonda out, and we'll see what we can do. Well, good luck, Rhonda, with that. I hope it all uh, turns into a positive result. And we've just got a quick call we'll take before we uh, we go. Uh, Len, good morning. Yes. Uh, G'day, mate. How are you? Question about the CPI. It's all yeah, sure. very well, but they control the CPI indirectly, so they can make it whatever they wish. No, well, my, and look, I, I'm not an expert in CPI, but my understanding is that I thought the Treasury or the Reserve Bank uh, was in yeah. charge of identifying what CPI is based on a number of factors. So that, to yeah, me, exactly. took it a little bit out of their hands. Well, who put the manager in the Reserve Bank? The government. Yeah, that, yeah, but they're, they're, to me, the Reserve Bank's an independent arm of, of uh, and doesn't really answer to government. So I probably feel a little bit, and look, you know, as I said, listeners know I'm very suspicious of politicians, <laughs> but I think the RBA, I probably have a bit of confidence in them that they can be at arm's length and do the right thing. Thanks very much for the call, Lynn. Quickly, um, let's uh, wind up a couple of these issues. You had one uh, with... Um an infringement, traffic infringement, yeah. 35 years of driving, yep. first infringement. Yes, absolutely, and I, and I suggested doing that. He contacted the police commissioner's office and, and that I was absolutely convinced that he'd get off. He hadn't had a ticket for 35 years. And I'm outraged to find out that the police commissioner's office has knocked him back. Now, I, I don't know what's going on over there because I'm sure if I had made the approach to the police commissioner's office and said that, you know, it was on behalf of 4BC, he would have got off for sure. What, what the police commissioner's office is doing with finding someone who 35 years hasn't had anything and then wouldn't pull the ticket, I don't know what's going on over there. They it, need to wake up. It's not a dangerous driving no, charge well, or, a, no, you know... No, it wasn't. He was, he was over yeah. the speed limit 10Ks or something. Like, you know, so, so police commissioner's office, please wake up over there. Yeah. Think about it, about bad will rather That's than right. good will. This was a good news story. And one final one to finish off because uh, we've got a couple of weeks break and I know we're moving up towards the 11, uh, 11 o'clock news. you got a 5K uh, refund for a, a credit... Uh, scam, yeah. a credit card scam involving the NAP. Yeah, what happened was this guy had had a, a nine transactions over a period of a couple of weeks where um, um, Montenegro, there'd been transfers for, through Western Union to Montenegro. Um, he approached his bank to get that money back. They'd said, well, no, you've used Western Union before because he's got a client in China. Um, they gave him the runaround for a couple of weeks. He come to me. Um, I got a bit of the runaround initially too, let me tell you, though. They weren't going to cough up either. Um, but in the end, um, you know, I had to get a bit narky and get a bit pointed with them and actually told them that they were keystone cops over there. They didn't know what they were doing. And in the end, we got him his five grand back. So that was a nifty result. Handy, very, a very handy little present for just Christmas. before Christmas. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, finally, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, we love having you on the program. All the best to you and your family for Christmas. I look forward to catching up with you in the new year. Same to you, Bonner, Bomber, mate. You know, ha- have a great Christmas. I Ho- hope that it's, it's a successful and safe one. And listeners out there too, thank you very much for your support. Please be safe and have a great Christmas. And thank you. It's been wonderful. Red Tape Busting with Shane Bowering. We'll catch up with him in a couple of weeks' time.